Good morning. My name is Pastor Kobe, and I am so glad you're here to join us. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, I hope you can come and join us some other time. Hopefully this Friday, we're doing family night. Uh, we're going to have Nerf night. We're going to do a whole bunch of different game modes down here in the New Life Center. It's going to be at 630. Um, it's geared towards elementary, but uh, anyone in the family can come. And so we're going to do a couple of different game modes, maybe have different age brackets so that uh, everyone can have some fun and hopefully get the parents involved too. We're going to be providing standard ammo and uh, eye protection for everybody. And I hope to see you there. It's going to be a lot of fun. So uh, with that, we're actually going to get started today with a missions moment. So let's check that out now. Like many kids growing up in Virginia during the 1800s, Charlotte Diggs Moon, or Lottie Moon, as her friends called her, liked to play and have fun. Some might have even said that Lottie liked to have too much fun. She loved to pull pranks on people. Lottie Moon's parents told her about Jesus, but it wasn't until college, during a church service, that she chose to turn from her sins to follow Jesus Christ with her whole heart and was baptized. Lottie chose to stay close to home when the Civil War broke out in the early 1860s. She took care of those in need or hurt because of the war. When the war ended, Lottie's teaching journey began, first in Kentucky and Georgia, and then all the way to China. Lottie Moon was passionate about others hearing the good news of Jesus. So, at 33, she joined her sister Edmonia in Tangzhou, China, as a missionary. She taught at a girls' school in the city, but often made trips to nearby villages so that she could share the gospel with more people. Lottie wore Chinese clothes, spoke the language, and lived like her neighbors. She baked cookies to share with children in her neighborhood and in the villages she visited. Lottie did these things to earn the trust of the people and to help her make friends easily. While living in China, Lottie Moon also wrote letters back to churches in the United States. She realized that there was much work to do, but not enough missionaries were being sent to do it. Because of her letters, an offering was taken for international missions, and that offering was named after her. Many churches still collect money for the Lottie Moon Christmas offering today. When war broke out in China, Lottie chose, once again, to stay close to home. But this time, it was her home in China. When she saw all that the people she loved were hurting, Lottie Moon chose to give all her money and her food to help those in need. At 71, Lottie was weak and sick. She had given all that she had to the Chinese people. Her friends saw that Lottie needed medical help, so they sent her back to the United States on a boat. On Christmas Eve, Lottie Moon died on her way back to Virginia, but the work God used her to do is still happening today. Because of Lottie, many Chinese people heard about Jesus. Churches were started and many people still give to the offering named after her. This offering has provided support for many more missionaries like Lottie Moon so that people all around the world will be able to hear the gospel. So Lottie Moon was a missionary who served over a hundred years ago, but people still remember and still talk about the great work that she did because the Holy Spirit empowered her to do some amazing work over in China. And uh, we are still proud to support missionaries today who are out and empowered by the Holy Spirit and carrying on the mission that Jesus gave to his disciples, uh, like we learned about two weeks ago. We're still carrying on that mission. So... Uh, that's something we're proud to support and something we're happy to remember through people like Lottie Moon. So uh, we're going to get rolling this week with a big picture question. Let's remember some of the other things that uh, the Holy Spirit does to encourage and empower Christians. Let's read our question together. One, two, three. How does the Holy Spirit help Christians? I'm going to quick run through some of these answers. The first one is, 
The Holy Spirit comforts us. It's one of the things that I am so grateful for and all the different challenges that we meet. Uh, the Holy Spirit can comfort us through all of those. He is our comforter. And the other thing he does is he shows us our sin. Now, I've got to admit, that one's not near as fun as being comforted by the Holy Spirit, but it is so, so important for us to learn about where we are having problems, where we are being sinful, where we need to uh, repent and receive forgiveness and uh, healing from God. So that is a huge deal too. And then this last one, he guides us as we live for God's glory. So we, like I said, he, Holy Spirit is our comforter. He has a whole bunch of other names. He is our teacher. He is our counselor. And so he does all kinds of things to guide us and shepherd us as we live for his glory. So, so grateful for all the things Holy Spirit does for us. Uh, we're going to move on to our memory verse, and this is our second week with this one. So uh, let's uh, get a quick review of all of our motions here. We're going to go through the motions twice, and then uh, we'll do it all together. So it goes like this. His divine power has given us everything required for life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by his own glory. That one, you just put your finger on your palm and then wiggle it up into the sky. Glory, his own glory and goodness. Go from here from your chin down to your palm, this good in sign language. Glory and goodness. Second Peter 1, 3. All right, here come the motions again and then we'll do it all together. His divine power has given us everything required for life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. 2 Peter 1, 3. All right, so stand on up. Let's say this nice and loud together. Do the motions along if you can. If not, just read it out and say it nice and loud. You ready? One, two, three. His divine power has given us everything required for life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. 2 Peter 1, 3. So this is part of a letter that Peter wrote to Christians all over uh, the known world and uh, just to encourage them saying, hey, Holy Spirit provides us with everything we need, everything for godliness, and we, we get this through the knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. So just saying, hey, in whatever situation you're in, God is enough. Jesus is enough. He's given his Holy Spirit. So that is something that is encouraging for you and me and whatever things we're going through right now. Um, so hopefully we'll get this memorized by the next two weeks and uh, then you can keep that with you in your heart forever. It's a really awesome thing, memorizing God's word. So uh, let's get into our Bible story. But first we've got to remember what we learned last week. Last week we learned that Jesus kept his promise to send his Holy Spirit to his disciples. He had promised that before he ascended up into heaven, and he made good on that promise because the disciples were gathered, and Holy Spirit came, and there were tongues of fire on them, and they started to speak languages that they hadn't learned, and they spoke these languages so that these people from all over the world who were in Jerusalem could hear this first sermon that Peter preached. And because so many people understood it, 3,000 people... Uh, repented and were baptized and became a part of Jesus' church. And this was the day called Pentecost. Everybody say, Pentecost. And this is when the church of Jesus Christ was born. This was the church's birthday. And so, uh, this week, we're going to be picking up with some of the disciples to see what life is like uh, now that they are living filled with the Holy Spirit. So, we're going to pick up with Peter and John. Peter and John were uh, some of Jesus' closest friends, closest disciples, and so uh, they were going together to the temple to pray. And on their way there, they saw a, a man sitting at the gate of the temple, and this was a man they had seen before, And they, they, because he was there every day. This man uh, was lame. That meant that his, his legs couldn't work. Doesn't mean he just wasn't cool or anything. Lame just means his legs didn't work. May have had any number of kind of diseases that can make that happen, but uh, he, he couldn't walk, and every day his friends or his family would bring him to the temple so that he could ask people for money because he couldn't work because of his legs, of course. And so uh, he was there asking for money just like every other day. And as they were walking in, Peter stopped, and he looked at the man. He said, look at us. 
And the man looked at them. He said, oh, maybe I'm going to get some money. That would be awesome. But Peter said this. He said, I don't have any silver or any gold for you, but what I do have, I give to you. And he said this. He said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, get up and walk. And so he bent down. And he took the man's hand and he helped him up to his feet. And this man, who had never walked in his life, stood up. And he didn't just stand there. He started to move his legs and he started to leap and jump. The Bible says he ran into the temple, started to praise God, say, glory to God, I'm healed. And he started to show everybody, look, it's me, it's me. It's the guy who sits in front of the temple and asks for money, but I'm, I'm healed, I'm healed, I'm healed. And everybody was celebrating and they were so happy to see that he was healed. But some people were really confused because they knew this guy. They knew he had been there for so long. And oh my goodness, how did this happen? Some of the people who were confused were the religious leaders. So the next day, when the religious leaders saw Peter and John coming back to the temple again, they, they tapped their shoulders and said, hey, hey, we need to ask you something. We have questions. They said, you, you healed this man. How did you heal this man? By what power and in whose name are you doing this? Peter was then filled with the Holy Spirit, given courage to speak the truth, speak what he needed to say. And he said this, This man was healed by the power of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You nailed Jesus to the cross, but God raised him from the dead, and it is by him, by his power, that this man is healed. So he spoke out. He spoke the truth. He stood up for Jesus. And Peter told the religious leaders that even though they rejected Jesus because they thought Jesus wasn't important, Jesus is the most important person ever. So the religious leaders didn't really know what to say because they'd seen this man healed and they probably weren't expecting to be stood up to like that. And they decided, all right, no, 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 we need, we need, we need to keep these guys quiet. We, need to, we can't let them keep talking about this Jesus guy. Jesus is dead. He's not here anymore. So they, they told Peter and John, they said, you are not allowed to preach in Jesus' name anymore and you need to stop doing all of this ministry. He's talking about Jesus being alive. You need to cut it out. And Peter and John, they told them this. They said, do you think it's right for us to listen to you instead of listening to God? We can't be quiet. We have to tell people what it is we have seen and what it is we have heard. So they knew that Jesus had given them a mission to preach the gospel in his name. And they were saying, hey, we have a mission from Jesus, who's God. Do you think we should stop doing what God wants just because some guy told us to? Of course not. They're going to stay on mission for Jesus. And so Peter and John met with some of the other believers because they knew that there was going to be some tough opposition coming if the religious leaders were against them. So they spent some time praying and asking the Holy Spirit to give them the courage that they needed to speak boldly and without fear. So in our Bible story today, we saw that Peter healed a man who couldn't walk. But was this something that Peter did all on his own? No. The Holy Spirit gave Peter the power to heal this man. And uh, he does more than just that. We saw in our big picture question that Holy Spirit also encourages us to stand up for him. And so he also gave Peter power when he was talking to the religious leaders. Peter was encouraged to stand up for Jesus and say, no, we don't have to listen to you because God has given us a mission and we are going to follow God. And so The Holy Spirit can do that same thing for you and for me to give us power to heal people who need it uh, with their physical things and even to heal the, the hurts in our hearts and even to take away sin. The Holy Spirit, Jesus is the only one with that power, but he uses us to speak his word and declare his gospel. So let's pray that he would do that in us. Let's pray together. Holy Spirit, thank you for coming and filling the disciples and uh empowering Peter to give us this example of what it means to live a life empowered by you. I pray that you would encourage us and give us boldness to speak in Jesus' name and also guide us to to know exactly when and what you want us to say. Thank you that you are with us all the time and in every situation. We praise you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for tuning in. Hope you learned something. Hope you're encouraged. Know that the Holy Spirit is with you. He can empower you to live out the mission for Jesus. So, hope to see you next week. I'll catch you then. Bye.